Hey, this is Jason with 4W Knives. New project. Got some copper pipe, 15 and 20, some 1095, and some 1080. I'm uh, going to experiment and try something a little bit different. Uh, for myself, I've done Kumai, uh, which is uh, five layers with copper. Uh, I'm going to try to get uh, four layers of copper in it. See how it goes. Okay, I have it all stacked together. You can see the copper in between. I'm going to weld a jacket to it to keep uh, all the uh, copper in, in case it melts. And I'll do this on both sides and the ends, and hopefully it keeps it in where it's supposed to be. All right, and please do not hold my crappy welding against me, but it does hold. So it must have done something right. Uh, as you see here, as I start the brazing process, I do not uh, get it up to forge welding temperatures. I want to stay below that. Uh, just in case that my welds don't hold, uh, I don't squirt copper everywhere. Um, I do get more aggressive with, you, with each pass with the press, just like I would forge welding. Uh, after I get it, what I think is a solid billet, I'll start to stretch it out with the aggressive rounding dies to lengthen it but also give the copper something a little more interesting than just a straight line uh, once i go to uh, ground my bells and then of course i go back to the roller mill and uh, straighten this thing out and get it to a pretty good length it, it lengthened out a lot more than what i thought i didn't do the math to see what it was going to be but i want to be able to get two knives out of it uh, provided this does make a good billet um, so the roller mill was great for that. It still amazes me today just how much you can stretch out steel. Um, just took a piece that was not even four inches long and uh, it's gonna be 18, 20 inches by the time we're finished. And, and that's just pretty cool to me. Uh, so right here, I'm just using the chop saw and I cut the ends off and then I try to grind the surface clean so I can draw my knife onto it to do my stock removal. All right, and I cut the, the welded piece for my jacket that I welded on. I cut one side of it off. Stop, since I'm doing stock removal, I'm gonna stay away from the edge anyways. So I just cut one side off just to kind of see if the, the, the brazen took and if it was solid and it appears to be. Um, the uh, shape that I'm going for here is a bull cutter, also called a cowboy knife. There's a bunch of different uh, terminology for this, but it's a pretty popular knife. And since this was an experiment, I thought I would do one that, that people in this area like. So, um, and it's, I think it's gonna turn out good with this uh, copper look. All right, so when I do the profiling, I get to use uh, my brand new grinder and rest table. I've never really used a rest table before. It's pretty nice. Uh, I mean, it made it lots easier to keep it square, and uh, I think it's gonna be a useful tool as I move forward. I use the rest table to get my 45 uh, down to the center line on the edge. Um, I'm just gonna experiment with this here and there, trying to use the table as doing my bevels. Um, I have no touch, no feel for it right now, so I didn't wanna take a chance of uh, messing up this uh, QMI. So uh, I, I, once I got the 45 in, I went ahead and went back to my normal uh, freehand style. Um, and it and it works great and it's fine if but if i can get a little bit better a little bit straighter on my bevels i would like to so i'll, I'll experiment and uh use that rest table here and there but uh, anyways this new grinder's kicking butt All right, 
right, it's been in the oven for two cycles at 400 degrees. And there she is. Heat treat complete. Now time to do the finish grind. All right, so one of the attachments I got with this grinder is the rotator platen or rotating platen, something like that. Uh, it's got a little rubber belt that uh, goes all the way around it, so it gives it a little bit of a cushion in the background. It's great for uh, getting down to the final edge. And I also used it this time to try to get uh, a cleaner finish so I'd have less hand sanding. Uh, with that rubber backing, the belts just... Uh, go a little bit better you don't get the belt bump that you do with the the finer grits uh, I, i'm still kind of up in the air on this i'm not positive how big it's going to be but i'll uh, let you know as we go and i i use it more and more okay so you missed a little bit but i've already had these uh skills put together uh a while back and i just decided that that's what i'm going to use or at least that's what i'm thinking about using um, so I apologize you didn't get to see the glue up part, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it to the house and get them glued up. As you can see, I've got to uh, reattach some of the, the segments there. They're starting to come apart, uh, but I'll do that in the house, and then you'll see the finish grinding on the scales after that. I like to get the flats and the spine as sanded on the grinder as possible. Uh, shortens up the hand sanding later on. This uh, contact wheel at the bottom of this new platen is perfect for it. Uh, of course, I use a flat platen to get the pins sanded as well as what I can, again, to eliminate some of the uh, hand sanding later. Uh, it works pretty good this way. As I start to do the final shaping of the handle, rounding all the edges with the uh, one inch wide belt, uh, slack belt, I want to thank you guys for watching. I've got the end video of the knife here in just a second. Uh, but if you did like this video, go like it and subscribe. Uh, I thought the uh, knife turned out really good. The scales are beautiful. There is one little spot where I re-glued those. It's got a seam. There's no gap. Uh, you can't get a fingernail in it. You can't get anything like that in it. But there is a little bit of a seam there, and I'm thinking it was just a glue. Uh, but overall, uh, again, I liked it, and I'm, I'm going to strive to do better. I appreciate you guys watching.